You know, in one of the most amazing de developmental studies ever conducted, <clears throat> a man by the name of Walter Michael of Stanford University back in the 60s created a simple test of the ability of four-year-old children to control impulses and to delay gratification. In this experiment, children were taken one at a time into a room with a one-way mirror. They were shown a marshmallow. The experimenter told them that they had to leave and that they could have the one marshmallow right then, but if they waited for the experimenter to return from this quick errand, they could have two marshmallows. These are actual marshmallows, by the way. <laughs> At any rate, this is what happened in this experiment. One marshmallow was left on a table in front of each child. What do you think happened? Well, some children grabbed that available marshmallow within seconds of the experimenter leaving, and then they quickly gobbled it down. Others, however, they waited up to 20 minutes for the experimenter to return and thus received the two marshmallows as promised. Now, in a follow-up study many years later, the children who grabbed the one marshmallow who they labeled the impulsive ones, and then the children who delayed gratification in order to receive the two marshmallows, they were considered the more controlled ones. Those two groups were compared. Now, the follow-up study found that the children who actually delayed gratification, who showed the impulse control, and who exercised patience, those two marshmallow kids, they scored higher on college entrance exams and had higher GPAs. This study showed that they tended to be uh, more positive, more persistent, and more patient when faced with life's difficulties. They also had less behavioral problems in school and at home. They were more self-motivated and self-disciplined all because they were able to delay immediate gratification in order to pursue their long-term goals. Now, in addition to this, the study also suggested that the lack of impulse control has proven to result in less successful marriages, low job satisfaction, bad health, lower income, and an overall frustration with life. Now, the key to the success of the two marshmallow kids was that early on they learned to sacrifice in the short term in order to gain in the long term. The two marshmallow kids, they knew instinctively that if they could just be patient... They would get what they wanted and maybe even more. Now, with this in mind, what about me? What about you? Would you have taken the first marshmallow? Or would you have waited for the experimenter to come back so that you could get the two marshmallows? Are you... A one marshmallow person, more impulsive, need immediate gratification, maybe a little low on the patient side, or are you a two marshmallow person, a little more controlled, a little more self-disciplined, maybe a little more patient? Well, maybe we tend to be a little bit of both, but nevertheless, today we're going to learn about the art of patience about the value of delaying gratification, about waiting on the Lord, and about having that, that two-marshmallow mindset. You know, it seems that the art of patience 
is a difficult art to master. And it is at odds with our society today because our society really is an instant gratification society. It's so, so prevalent. After all, just when we look around, what is it that we see? We have fast food. Well, we've had fast food for a long time. We have faster and faster computers. We have the express oil changes. We have instant coffee. We have overnight delivery. We have express mail. We have email. We have instant messenger. We have cell phones. We have one hour dry cleaning and so on and so on and so on. We see our society moving a mile a minute and thinking the whole time that it's always good for us. Maybe some of it's good, but is it always good for us? You know, it's even in our churches also. Many cry out to God and we say, God, give me patience, but I want it right now. Furthermore, I, I once heard about a church in Florida, and I'm not sure uh, where this church is, but there is a church here in Florida, maybe more than one, that advertises, are you ready for this? A 22-minute worship service. You're thinking, hey, that's not a bad idea, right? They would already be out. They would already be out right now. A 22-minute worship service. You go there and they promise that in 22 minutes it will all be over and you'll be gone. The sermons, are you ready for this? They're only eight minutes long. Again, don't get any ideas. But you see, that's one marshmallow thinking. That's one marshmallow thinking. That's instant, quick, there's no need to wait. You're in, you're out, boom. Something's wrong with that. Something's not right about that. At any rate, you know, it seems to me that we could all greatly benefit by making less of the one marshmallow decisions and making more of those two marshmallow decisions, those decisions that strive as the body of Christ to become more patient, to delay gratification. And we see it all throughout the Bible. All throughout Scripture is the call for us to, to become a more patient people because of its incredible benefits and its blessings. Galatians 5, 22, the Apostle Paul says that patience brings us peace. It brings us peace. You want to be more patient in your life? Well, or rather, do you want to be more peace, peaceful in your life? Do you have, want to have more peace in your heart? Well, be a little more patient. Have more of that two marshmallow mindset. And of course, also in Galatians, we know that, that patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. So the, the, the more that the Holy Spirit is revealed in our lives, we're going to find that we become more, more patient. Psalms 41 and Romans 8.25 both say that, that patience will clarify God's purpose for your life. Patience will clear up for that. Maybe you don't know what God has in store for you, but if we are patient, it becomes more clear. Proverbs 15, verse 18 says that patience will help us develop lasting relationships, real relationships, genuine relationships. Also, in Proverbs 25, verse 15, it tells us that patience will influence others in a positive way. So the more patient you are with yourself, then somehow, some way, it's, you're going to be more patient with other people. And it's going to influence them for the better. And then in our scripture reading for today from James uh, chapter 5, it tells us that patience helps us to persevere in the midst of suffering. In the midst of hard times and, and, and difficult situations. You know, this particular church, well, this letter of, uh, from James was probably circulated around to many different churches. And, of course, the churches at that time were going through very difficult times. They were being persecuted. And so James is saying, look, you've got to be more 
patient. You will endure. You will persevere. You see, patience is absolutely essential. If we're going to call ourselves followers of Jesus, if we're going to say that we are a people of faith, well, it's absolutely essential to be two marshmallow people. James says to us, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its viable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and for the spring rains. You see, a farmer plants, but he doesn't harvest until later, right? He must be what? He must be patient. The farmer has to be patient. So James knew exactly what he was talking about because they were, it was a, uh, an agrarian type society and they did a lot of their, their farming. And we all know that you don't plant a garden one day or plant crops one day and then the very next day you have all the fruit and vegetables that you need. No, it takes patience. goes on in verse 8 and says, You too be patient and stand firm. Stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Now, what was he talking about here? Well, when James wrote this letter, they were still expecting for the, uh, to the return of Jesus Christ. You know, and yet he still had not come back in the way that they had expected. But in reality, yes, uh, Jesus had returned through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. But more than anything, what he's saying here is that God's will is being realized in your life right now. It's being realized in your church. The kingdom of God, my friends, is not just some future reality, but it's also a present reality. The kingdom of God is already here, but not in its, not in its fullness. And this is what James was trying to say to you, that God is with you. The kingdom of God is already here, but not in all of its fullness. Someday that will, will happen. But for now, be patient. Persevere. Endure. Stand firm on the gospel of God's love and our call to love other people. And then he goes on to say in verse 9, he goes, while you're trying to be patient, he says... Don't grumble against each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Uh, so he says, don't let your impatience result in grumbling against each other and any other negative behavior. Do any of you ever grumble against each other? Never? Do you ever hear any grumbling on TV or internet or anything like that. No grumbling whatsoever. Everywhere I turn there is grumbling. We're always grumbling about this or about that. I know that I do and I got to stop that. Maybe you do too. But the thing is, is that when we are trying to become a more patient people, a two marsh, having that two marshmallow mindset, it's really easy for us to want to start grumbling and, and looking around at the negative of, of what's happening in our world or what's happening in other people's lives. And he's like, don't do that. While you're, trying to, while you're growing in patience, don't grumble against each other. Instead, I would say, hey, let us try to remain as positive and as encouraging as, as we can be. He goes on to say, Brothers, and as, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Did you hear that? Just not... It's not halfway. It's full. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. And so then with this in mind, James gives us another example, another couple of examples of patience. 
Who does he talk about here? First, he brings out the prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and so forth. All of the prophets had to patiently endure suffering for the sake of the kingdom of God. And then in verse 11, we read, uh, he utilizes Job as a model of a patient sufferer who finally endured and as a result was blessed by God. Maybe you've heard it said before that that person, a person who maybe is a two marsh, has that two marshmallow mindset, uh, who demonstrates uh, a special kind of patience in their life, you say, well, that person had the patience of Job. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, the patience of Job. Well, at any rate, we are called, all of us, to be a patient people. But what does that really look like? What does that really, uh, how does, uh, what does that look like? Well, it can be manifested in a million and one different ways. But, you know, patience is the ability to wait for an expected outcome without experiencing any anxiety, tension, or frustration. Patience is the ability to let go of your need, our need, to have it all right now, whatever that is. Patience is the trait that displays compassion, understanding, and acceptance toward others who are imperfect human beings just like me and you. And people, uh, patience is, is uh, the ability to remain calm in the midst of turmoil because you know somehow, some way, God is in the middle of it all. God not only has His fingerprints on your life, God has His hands on your life. We may not believe it, but God is in control. And God, no matter what happens, God can bring, uh, God can bring good out of anything. But we have to be willing to be patient, to have that two marshmallow mindset in order to see God actually working in our midst. Impatience, on the other hand, is different. For example, by being impatient, we run the risk of always being dissatisfied, always being upset about something, being angry at yourself or with others. That's, that's impatience. Uh, impatient, by being impatient, we enter into the realm of what is called uh, the throwaway generation. It doesn't matter how old you are, we can all kind of be a part of that throwaway generation. This means that because of a lack of patience, we tend to want to discard relationships, people, jobs, churches, schools, and the like. Whenever things just don't seem to be working out the way that we want them to, or as quickly as we want them to, we just, hey, let's just give up. It's not worth it. Well, that's just impatience. That is a one marshmallow mindset. But when we are more patient, we have the attitude of assurance that it somehow it will work out. A more patient person feels more comfortable with his life. You feel more peace and calm in the midst of the storm, more content, more tranquil, not nearly as rushed or stressed. But let us realize a few things that patience is not. Sometimes we get this messed up, our understanding of what patience is. Patience doesn't mean getting too comfortable or too complacent in our situation. Being patient doesn't mean being just idle or unproductive or lazy. You remember going back to that illustration that James uses is that, yes, the farmer sows the seed and has to be patient, but then what does the farmer have to do? The farmer has to continue to work, right? Has to continue to do the work. Doesn't just plant everything and say, okay, that's it, my job is done. No, that's it. Being patient is, is, is not like that. Being patient doesn't mean procrastinating. A, person, a patient person waits and yet continues to work. 
A procrastinator simply puts off something which should be done today. Being patient doesn't mean that it's going to feel good. Patience hurts sometimes, doesn't it? Patience hurts sometimes. It hurts sometimes to delay gratification. Have any of you uh, noticed the traffic around here? Any of you notice a little bit of an increase? Especially, how many of you come from the south end? A lot of you do. <laughs> That's why you're at the 8 a.m. service, right? <clears throat> that traffic. Um, yeah, you know, slow drivers bug me. You know, but we got to be patient, right? And uh, driving is just one way where we can be a more patient people. Uh, or maybe when you're in the, a restaurant somewhere and you're, and you're waiting for your waiter or your waitress and, you know, they haven't even taken your order yet, you know, or your drink order. And then when you make your order, you have to wait for the food. Or maybe when you're in Walmart or someplace like that, you're going to get behind somebody who has a basket full of stuff and they're paying in pennies, you know, it seems... We're, you know what? We're all going to find ourselves in situations where, where uh, it's not going to feel good. But, but remember uh, the patience that is coming from that. You know, I'm reminded of a young Christian man who went to his, his pastor to ask for prayer. And he says, Pastor, will you please pray that I may become a more patient person? And the pastor agreed, said, sure, I'd be happy to pray for you. And then they bowed their heads together and then and the pastor began to pray these words. And he said, Lord, send this young man tribulation in the morning. Send this young man tribulation in the afternoon. Send this young man. And it was at that point that this young Christian man, he, he blurted out. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. What? Why are you praying that? I... I wanted you to pray for patience. And then the pastor responded. He says, oh, but it's through tribulation that we learn patience. That's really how we learn. It's through those difficult, tough times. And also, being patient doesn't mean that God is going to work any quicker or any harder Okay, remember that God's time, more than likely, is always different from my time and your time. No matter what happens, God is in control. God will work it out the way that God sees fit. I'm reminded of the Roman comic dramatist, Titus Plotus. He once said these words, Patience is the best remedy for every troubled soul. Do you feel troubled in your soul today? If so, I've got some good medicine for you and for myself. And that medicine is patience. So how do we become more patient? Well, my friends, let us pray. Just keep on praying. And here's the thing about praying about patience. When you ask God for more patience, God is going to allow you to be in those situations where you're either in traffic or you're in that restaurant or you're in Walmart or you're in a situation in your family uh, or something with your health or maybe it's a financial situation where you are going to have to wait. You pray for patience, you're going to find yourself in those situations where you have to wait. Because that's how we become more patient, right? By actually doing it. So I want to close with this. You know, it was once written that patience is a virtue. Possess it if you can. It's found often in a woman, but never in a man. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm right there with you. You know, whether you're man, woman, child, we all struggle with 
with patience. But we are called today and every day to be less like the one, the one marshmallow kind of thinking and to be more like the two marshmallow kind of thinking. Let us seek to be patient. Let us seek to delay gratification. Let us wait for the Lord and God will respond in God's time. And the people said, Amen. And our thanks be to God.